Now let us discuss the contribution of different scientists who laid the steps for the study of cells as well as about their function. We shall see how these scientists contributed towards the discovery of cells. There are many scientists who studied the cells. As we already discussed, till the 1660s, other than Robert Hooke, no other scientist had studied the cell. They studied living organisms but didn't know that the cell is the basic structural and functional unit. Another scientist, Antony van Leeuwenhoek in 1670, was one of the few people to observe cells, much like Robert Hooke. Using his handcrafted microscopes, he was the first to observe and describe microorganisms in pond water, which he originally referred to as animalcules, from Latin animalculum, that means tiny animal. He was a Dutch businessman and a contemporary of Hooke. He also used microscopes and was a physicist. He made fine quality lens for the use of monocular microscope and was the first person to observe bacteria as well as protozoa in the pond water drop. Some of the lenses could magnify objects up to 260 magnification power. We will discuss bacteria and protozoa in the upcoming classes. In 1833, an English botanist named Robert Brown discovered the nucleus in plant cells. He saw a darkly stained structure present within the transfer section of plants when observed under the microscope. Robert Brown was a botanist. A botanist is a person who is specialized in studying plants and all the aspects related to plants. In 1838, Matthias Jacob Schleiden, a German botanist, concluded that all plant tissues are composed of cells and an embryonic plant arose from a single cell. A plant arises from a single cell. Then he declared that the cell is the basic building block of a plant. This statement by Schleiden was the first generalization concerning cells. Before Matthias Schleiden, there were no conclusions regarding cells and their arrangements. But Schleiden proposed that the cells are the basic building blocks as he found that a plant consists of many cells and it arises from a single cell. In 1839, Theodore Schwann, a German biologist, came to a conclusion that animal tissue is also composed of cells which are the small units and ended any speculations that both plant cells and animal cells were fundamentally different in structure. Schwann described this cellular structure in animal cartilage, rigid extracellular matrix. His many contributions to biology include the development of cell theory, the discovery of Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system, the discovery and study of pepsin, the discovery of the organic nature of yeast and the invention of the term metabolism. So Schleiden and Schwann concluded that plants and animals are made up of cells respectively. In 1840, Albert von Kolliker 
realize that sperms and eggs are also cells. In 1845, Carl Hendrich Brown found that cell is the basic unit of life. Then in 1855, a scientist named Rudolf Virchow was the first to demonstrate the cell theory. Firkau is credited with several very important discoveries. His most widely known scientific contribution is his cell theory, which built on the work of Theodore Schwann. He was one of the first to accept the work of Robert Remarque, who showed the origins of cells was the division of pre-existing cells. Firkau encapsulated this in the epigram Omnis Cellula E Cellula, that is, all cells come from cells, which he published in 1855. It is a rejection of the concept of spontaneous generation, which held that organisms could arise from non-living matter. For example, maggots were believed to spontaneously appear in decaying meat. Francesco Reddy carried out experiments which disproved this notion and coined the maxim omne vivim ex ovo. Every living thing comes from a living thing, literally from an egg. Firkau and his predecessors extended this to state that the only source for a living cell was another living cell. In 